This time on back shed, we're dusting off the XY and she's getting an engine swap. 351 out, 410 cubic stroker in. Painted the XY back in 1998. It's not a GT, it's a Falcon 500 JG23 body number. Back in the early 2000s, I put the stripes and the other GT bits on it, not to make it a GT replica. This was back before they were worth a ton of money. It's just because I like the look of it. Anyhow, stick around, take a look. I'm starting with the fuel system. So I got the old tank out and I'll show you why I'm replacing it. I can't remember when I damaged it but I, I split it somehow and there was a fiberglass repair under that shit there and it's finally said no more. You can see it's starting to lift and I don't know if you've ever smelt stale fuel. It stinks, it's horrid. can't remember exactly why I put another outlet. I think there was an intention to run a separate nitro system at one stage but anyway good opportunity to replace it. How good's that? I ordered that 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon and it's already here. That's fast. So the wind picked up crazy outside, we brought him in here. Now we're just about to put some etch primer on the tank over the bare metal. Rule number one with putting etch primer on, just dust it on nice and light. Don't go too heavy. The heavier you put on, the more chance it's got of peeling. Think of it like this, if you poured paint on the glass, when that dries you can flick the edge and peel it off as if it was never there. But dust it on the glass, you ever tried getting an overspray off? That shit don't come off. That's the theory. So that's the edge primer on. I'm now going to use a silver base coat. I want to say light. If you look, you can almost see through that. That's two light coats of edge primer. Right, let's get the base coat on. Taking too long to friggin' dry. It's not that warm here today, so I'm gonna rethink this one. I was gonna flip it over. Yeah, taking too long.
So she's in position, ready to start getting this motor out. A lot of the stuff I've already got off it, like headers, some of the stuff that's missing. I had a couple of F100s that I wanted bits and pieces for, an alternator, um, uh, a fuel pump, things like that. I thought if I'm going to replace them, I may as well replace it new on the XY. So you steal the bits off it, guess what, never bought the new bits. So this is how it looks. As bad as that looks, there is nothing wrong with the motor. It actually ran a 908th mile, which isn't super fast, but it had a 3.7 diff in it, so it's probably not suited to 8th mile. Anyway, let's start getting some of this junk out, get the tranny cooler out, just start lifting bits out. If you're taking your transmission out without taking the engine out, if you're taking it out separate, separately, don't forget to chock here your head against the firewall because otherwise, best case scenario is you just rip an engine mount when it tilts back. Worst case scenario is if you've got expensive rocket covers, you damage them, damage your firewall. Probably doesn't matter in this case, but just a tip. Just chock the gap down here between your back of your head and your firewall, both sides so you don't dent the firewall. Notice I got a hoist, but still ended up on my back corner transmission out. It's because the transmission jack didn't turn up, so we had to do that the old way. What you want to remember when you're pulling a transmission out is get most of the fluid on the floor before you grab and go and grab a bucket. Reason being, if the boss comes down and sees there's no mess, she'll think you've just been down here drinking beer. So make sure you make a big ass mess.
that's probably it for today. I'm keen for a beer. 351's out, C4's out on the bench, ready to do that select shaft seal. Um, in the morning we're going to get prepping for painting the engine bay and, and ripping. I can't wait for this in fair dinkum. There was a few moments pulling this grill out that I was hating on my 21 year old self. Oh, some of the shit you're doing here. Bolts where there should be screws, things like that, all rusted together. Mate, give myself an uppercut 20 years ago. So one thing I can't stress enough is if you're sanding down to paint your engine bay, take your time, do it properly. I use a wet sandpaper, I'm using a 320, which this is a metallic, so anyone that's done any paintwork probably knows it's a little bit coarse uh, from metallic paintwork, but I'm gonna use a technique called wet on wet. So when you go and have a paintwork that's not actually that bad, you sand it, you put your primer on, your primer surface on, and go straight over it with your base color, which in this case is gonna be black. Once the black's down, I'll mask off the chassis rails, they're going to stay black, and then I'll do the green. So by the time you get to the metallic green, you've put a primer on and two coats of black. So that's why the 320 is not too coarse for this job. Also, it makes sand a bit easier if it's a bit coarser. Where you can't get at it with the sandpaper, go around with a scotch bright. Otherwise, you'll get your edges lifting. It's called bridging. It's where the two sanded parts in between are still shiny, say in a corner, and the paint will lift. In that, and create a bridge in those corners. So take your time. If it's a rat rod, if it's a patina vehicle, go your hardest, make it as rough as you want. But in something like this where you want it to actually be decent, take your time, do it properly. But enough talking, get into it.
Here's a little paint tip for you. Base coat's on before you start spraying out your colour. Check it first. Get an old paint scraper, mask off a small section, put a bit on and then check it against the part of the car. The amount of times I've seen colours mixed up, they look good in the can, you spray them on, unmask and then nothing like it. Check it first. So, engine bay is painted, this is the fun bit, it's a bit like Christmas, we get to unwrap it and have a look. So, engine base painted, last night I spent a little bit of time putting a few bits and pieces back together. It's now time to start mocking up this motor. So, why I say we're going to mock the motor up, a lot's changed this time around. Cylinder heads have changed, so the bolt position has changed. It's actually a raised port head, so that means the headers have changed as well. Headers are actually bigger diameter, and we've got a new starter as well, and we'll position that under it, clock it round, see which way we need that solenoid to point. If we do it all here on the floor, the header's changed, the head's changed, the starter motor's different. I think the headers are going to interfere with the dipstick, so we might have to modify that. You're better off doing all that on the engine crane, out where you can get to everything, make it all mock up, rather than having half it in the car um, and fighting with it, even with the hoist where you're fighting above your head. You might even not be able to get these headers in with the dipstick on that on that transmission. So enough talking, let's get into it. And this is why you do it out of the car. It does foul there on the dipstick tube, so we're going to have to bend the dipstick tube. And we've had the clock to start at 180 degrees, so the solenoid's now on the bottom, but we'll have to watch when we go in because the steering arm's here somewhere. But I think we'll just have enough clearance. So the first hurdle was you had the clock to start a motor, the second hurdle was the uh, C4 dipstick tube on the headers and uh, you may have seen I had to take a hammer to my brand new headers and I'll probably need blue can therapy for that a hug later but anyway it's continued I've got the motor in there um, on its own and the sump hits everywhere on the cross member so it's Friday afternoon I'm not going to be able to get anything overnight so we're just going to butcher it. I'll have to modify it because uh, I want to spend the rest of the weekend fitting everything else up, so if I'm waiting for a sump, I, there's not much else I can do, so we'll rip it out, drop it off, butcher the shit out of it, get it back in.
So we've got a little change of plan. I knocked the sump off with the intention of modifying it and found that the pickup on the oil pump was right at the back, right there. That oil pump pickup was right at the back of the sump where it had to be modified, so I was going to have to bend it in. So I just put a little bit of pressure on it to try and bend it and broke the pump. So luckily I've got one of them on the shelf, so that won't be an issue. New pump will go on. And I've just decided to rob the 351 pan, the, the motor that came out of it. It always had a little bit of a leak around the drain plug, so I'm going to fix that before we clean it up and paint it. But, yeah, we'll get there. We're getting there. So I just sat the big pan on the motor that came out. That fits a F100 because that's what it came out of. That big fin sump was in an F100. That'll probably end up in an F100. So I'll put that pick up, that pan. I'll leave that as one. We'll do a real quick clean up of the, the drain plug on that. Put the new pump and a standard pick up on the motor. And hopefully by tonight I'll have it in and back to where I thought I was about four hours ago. So a few more bits, fuel pressure reg, so we can start on the fuel system, thermo fan, uh, fuel rail, so we can get the radiator in now, get the grill in now. And all transmission cooler lines are in, coolers fitted, bars back on, grills going back in, few clips still missing on that. Radiators back in, thermos mounted. Started mounting up the fuel system, but um, just waiting on a couple of fittings for the firewall. Tomorrow's a bit of a different story. Tomorrow it's wiring. Now, I don't dislike wiring, I actually don't mind wiring. I dislike fixing wiring that some idiot's been in there and cobbled together shit on top of shit. That I don't like. The problem with tomorrow when I start wiring is I know who the idiot was. Yeah, there could be a bit of hating on my 20 year old self tomorrow when I get in there and see where I've picked up power from for this and that, but really it's just gonna be strip it back, get back to basics, get back to the standard wiring, um, and then maybe produce some better power sources for the ignition, the thermo fan, uh, and the fuel pump, that's, that's, it's not a lot to do, it's pretty basic stuff, but anyway, we'll get into it tomorrow. The 
main stop, we're going to get outside where I can get the doors open and get in under the dash. First thing we're going to do is make an acrylic relay panel. We're going to mount the fuel pump relay, the fan relay and also a relay for the ignition. The reason I want to make them on a little panel is so I can hide it right up behind the glove box or somewhere like that out of sight and I can keep all my fresh wiring separate from the original wiring. got the relay panel done, this way you're not working above your head. You just mount your panel, you've got a couple of wires to plug together and join. And the other thing is if you're working above your head, laying on your back, it's impossible to balance a beer. So it's much easier on the table. Just being honest. Here's a handy hint when you're wiring. Maybe not for you pros, but for us redneck amateurs. Now, you know I made the little panel that's gone up under the dash to keep everything nice and neat. You're still gonna end up laying on your back at some stage, so keep your floor clean. Reason being, at the most unopportune time, you're gonna get a screw or a fitting or something embedded in the back of your head, so you can lift your head, smash it on the dash, and then you're gonna put your head back down. So the cycle continues. You get stabbed in the back of the skull, you lift your head, hit your head on the dash, and so on and so on. So keep it nice and tidy down there, so you're not smashing your forehead up under the dash all the time. All right, so here's a little tip for you. Over the years, these have probably had that many bulbs put in them. They're a little bit worn to the point where you sort of have to wiggle it. It's that loose in there, you gotta wiggle it to get it to work. Here's a little tip. Strip yourself off some wire, like that, and wrap it around the body of the bulb twice. So it looks like that. Then cut off the excess here, so it looks like that. So that's only earth. So this wire is just gonna ride up to the front of the bulb there and just sit against the body. So when you whack it in, now it's now nice and tight, like that. Now don't get me wrong, that is not a how to fix your muscle car forever type of fix. That's a how to get your ass to work on Monday with working lights or get through rego or something like that. I won't stay like that forever. Just use that little trick until the new parts come. Yeah, right. So at this point, I'm just gonna pull up on the wiring. I'm not gonna completely encase it. Um, just in case I have to add a wire or, or trace a wire on an initial startup. We're still waiting on a brake booster, which is getting a bit frustrating, but we're gonna make good use of the time. I'll get the bonnet hinge in, we'll get the bonnet on, and we'll sort out how high this um, carburetor is sitting to get the shaker in there. Now you can buy aftermarket shakers for the high rise manifold, but the chances of it being exactly the right height and sitting in the right place is pretty slim, so I'd probably have to modify it anyway. So. The one I've got is just an old, it's a fiberglass reproduction shaker, so I've got no remorse whatsoever just to butcher that up. We're going to get that in place and just make some brackets that go across the top of the air cleaner that I've got and get that mounted. The other thing we're doing now is the exhaust. I've got some two and a half inch uh, bullet type of mufflers for the front. They're gonna go straight off the back of the collector. There will be a flange at the end of that, so if you wanna get loud and obnoxious at the track or something, you could drop it off there. Then just pipe and some chamber mufflers. Now, I've used a two and a half inch muffler, but two and three quarter inch pipe. Reason I do that, you put a little tiny 
stretch in the first 25 mil and it'll be a perfect interference fit. Then once you've got a nice overlap, then you weld him. So that's essentially all it's gonna be, how it's sitting there. Two shorty mufflers, five inch in diameter, two and a half inch pipe, two and three quarter inch pipe, the chamber mufflers. I haven't decided how far I'm gonna go out the back, whether I go dump straight away over the diff or right out the tailpipe. But for now, that's how it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, for now, forever. Let's get into it. I've brought the pipes inside because the wind's starting to pick up, but here's a little tip. These flanges, they will fit clocked in any direction. So just a little one, do label it which side it come off and do also put an arrow at the top. Reason being, if you've got them lined up and they're slightly that way or slightly up or down, when you get them back under there, you're gonna have clearance issues if you're not putting the same one at the top. The other thing is, I line the, the brand if there's a marking or put a texture mark or something on the side so you can line them up parallel with one another. And when you put the flange on the back, die grind there, just so the head of the bolt doesn't hit on that and you don't have fitment issues. Anyway, let's keep going. All right, so I've got the bullets in and we've got the back flange on now. The next thing I do, and I'm not gonna do it right now because I wanna do it when it's running, but I'm gonna run a texture line up here and a texture line up there. And whichever burns off first, that's where my, my crossover pipe's gonna go. I don't have a lot of space. It is a street car. That's why I want decent mufflers under it at the front there. But I want to be able to drive this thing probably only with a shorty exhaust. So we've got to quieten it down. I've got a very similar exhaust to this on the 502 EH, which is coming up in the next episode. And it works really well. Now I've done this tip before when I was fitting a master cylinder as the F100 VO, but I'm telling you, fitting a master cylinder is one of the best ways to ruin your life for good. You cross thread one of these lines, mate, it's hell. 
Now I've already finished this, but leave everything loose. Leave the master cylinder loose, leave the booster loose and hand thread these in. Make sure they're going in nice and easy by hand. The tiniest bit of lateral pressure from one of these lines as you're going in and you will cross thread it. And then you're looking at retapping masters or trying to fit new fittings or right, it is just hell. So leave everything loose. Keep wiggling the booster as you're going in by hand then nip them up at the end. Make sure they're in before you tighten anything. So over the years, we've rescued some cars that have been parked for a long time. I'm talking you know, 15, 20 years. And never have I had one that's been parked for such a short period of time that the brakes just won't cooperate. The booster finally turned up, um, so booster and master went on as you saw in the time lapse. But I've been trying to bleed these brakes for hours. The only one that gave up without a fight was the left hand front. This right hand rear finally broke, broke it loose. I was a couple of hours in. I've now been going at this one for what feels like a lifetime to the point where I've threaded MIG welding wire up from the other side of the splitter to try and dislodge whatever's, it's obviously rust or something like that. It just won't play the game. At this point, I'm gonna get this G-clamp, whack it on the brake caliper, try and force the piston in to push the fluid back up, hopefully dislodging the rust that's there and then as it comes back down, when the pressure comes the other way, hopefully it'll come down and lay differently and maybe just slip through and we can bleed it out and, and go from there. Unfortunately, I can't even undo all the fittings and take the lines out and, and flush them out and whichever because I've managed to strip uh, both ends of the hard line on this left-hand wheel. So it's now, if this doesn't work, I'm uh, pretty much cutting the line and just going to have to replace the rubber hose from the body to the diff and remake a left hand line. That's how much of a pain in the ass it's been. Make matters worse, now I've lost my beer. No, I haven't found it. Righto, let's stop whinging and get into it. So, I don't know if you can see, but I'll see if I can give you an idea. I got this line off on this side and so I can thread MIG welding wire up through here around this side but this one I've heated it, I've WD'd it and used a tube spanner and stripped the arse out of it so it's frigged. I don't know if you can see that, it's frigged there and this guy I've stripped it as well so I can't undo that line at all so if the old clamp doesn't work we are cutting it and rebuilding this line probably have to replace that because I can't get that fitting out either so we'll put the g-clamp here try and force that piston in and force fluid back and hopefully it'll be like unblocking a drain it'll just dislodge it enough uh, so that when we bleed pressure back down it, it sits differently maybe even flushes it so g-clamp on compress the piston in but the air in the line is allowing it to compress without anything really beneficial happening. So calipers off. We're going to try and thread the MIG wire back the other way and see if I can dislodge it. got fluid that's a win so now we're going to get a couple more um, litre containers of brake fluid and flush the Christ out of it so exhausts on tail shaft in top off some fluids and I think we're driving
was a bit of a fail. Um, started fine, ran fine, massive exhaust leaks. It was a bit optimistic of me to think that a factory gasket that I had on the shelf would fit. Um, looked like it covered everything, but it's not sealing at the front of cylinder one and the back of cylinder eight. And the fact that it's so symmetrical on the leak tells me the gasket's the issue. So I've got some correct gaskets on the way, but that does mean exhaust back out. Let's get into it. So I checked the gasket to the head and it fits perfectly. Port matched to the head nicely. But look, the port of the header, being a 3V and a 4V header, port of the header came outside the gasket. So number one and number eight leaking. That's lined up with the bolt holes and the ports and all that. And those ones are all but, like if you get it and poke it, that's actually in the port. It's a fraction, if I move it. Wouldn't have been able to see this in the time lapse, but that nut, you know when you drop a nut or a bolt and you never see it ever again? That was almost what happened with that one. I dropped it and luckily there's not much on the floor. Out of the corner of my eye, I see this nut sit on its edge and roll into that hole. Straight up there. How? I could sit here with a box of these nuts and roll them all day, I could not get it in there. But if you drop it, it's like the universe's way of saying, well, he doesn't need that. I'll put that somewhere. He never has to worry about it ever again.
Okay, for paint, we're going to do the black rails first. Uh, <laughs> just put a little bit of pressure on it to try and bend it and broke the fucking pump. What did I say? Got the radio and all that sort of shit. I don't know what else. The C4 in transmission. Oh, fuck me. Just everywhere. Now mount your panel. And you've got a couple of wires to join. To join? To join. What are you going to do if you can't laugh at yourself? Anyway, don't forget to go back and watch some of other videos like this. There's a heap of good stuff there. The next time you see the XY, we're putting some low diff gears in it. And we're hitting the drag strip. So do hit the subscribe. Doesn't matter whether you're into muscle cars, rat rods, Drag cars or just old car rescues. We've got a bit of everything coming up. Thanks for watching.